One of my favorite little Ultrabooks just got a refresh. This is the Razer Blade Stealth 2020 with a GTX 1650 Ti GPU in it, along with some other nice bumps in the specs, which we'll talk about in a sec. For now, Razer sent me the new Stealth to borrow, so let's go through it in this complete walkthrough. Now, if you're not familiar, Complete Walked on this channel is where I try to go through every single feature I possibly can on a new device so that you guys are better prepared should you be in the market to actually go buy one. With that said, there's a lot to go through. So, let's get started with the hardware. The new Stealth comes in two models that are basically identical except for the screen options. Firstly, we have a 13.3 inch FHD non-touchscreen display with an anti-glare coating that is apparently the world's first 13.3 inch display in an Ultrabook to feature a 120 hertz refresh rate. This means that that screen can refresh the image on it up to 120 times a second versus the more traditional 60 for the more common 60 hertz displays. For most of your day-to-day -day tasks, you'll be hard pressed to notice much of a difference though, except maybe in a browser while scrolling. But the big benefit to this is seen when playing video games. It means much smoother graphics and being able to react a lot faster to things on the screen. Now, in addition to that high refresh display, we also have a 4K touchscreen model for an extra $200. Both screens, though, cover 100% of the sRGB color gamut, have 49 millimeter bezels on the sides. The bottom one is much larger, you'll notice. We have a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, and Razer apparently individually calibrates the displays in the factory. The only difference between the two is that the 4K model is one-tenth of a pound heavier, which is identical to the older model differences between the touchscreen and non-touchscreen models, so it's safe to say that literally that's the difference in weight between the two display technologies. The chassis are made of a CNC-milled unibody design that Razer is sort of known for at this point, along with the new clean square lines that they've added relatively recently to the entire Blade lineup. And in my opinion, all of this definitely gives it a much more premium look and feel than some of the other gaming laptops out there. Something else unmistakably Razer is the three-headed snake logo on the back. And since this is the Stealth, it doesn't light up like it does on the Blade 15 models, and instead is two-tone and etched into the lid. Above that screen, we have a 720p webcam that can also be used for Windows Hello to unlock the computer using your face. And for anyone curious, this is what that webcam looks like and the mics sound like. Beneath the screen, we have our RGB chroma-enabled keyboard that, unlike the other larger Razer models, isn't a per-key chroma, but instead the entire keyboard is a single unit that you can change the colors of using the built-in Razer Synapse app. Something interesting about this keyboard, though, is that they changed the size of the shift key on the right to match the same size on the left, like most keyboards do, as well as gave this new Stealth half-sized arrow keys to have things line up a bit better. Now, the old keyboard from last year's Stealth never really bothered me as much as the rogue function key on the 15-inch models does. You can see what I mean by that in any of my walkthroughs on the 15-inch models that I've linked below, so I won't get into that here. But I know others who were slightly annoyed by it. Regardless, there's something about the keyboard that I've always liked. They have a good balance of clicky travel to them, and I enjoy typing on this keyboard, frankly. But it's always nice to see a company taking user complaints into account here and actually fixing them based on that feedback. Under that, we have our thankfully precision trackpad that, if you aren't familiar, allows Windows to handle the drivers for the trackpad compared to the OEMs that used to each have their own. And so it's honestly more precise and can use Windows gestures too, which I use a lot. Also, while using the Stealth, I realized that there is something about the trackpad that even other Microsoft Precision trackpad devices don't have, but I can't quite put my finger on it. No pun intended. It just feels smoother to the touch and just better, frankly. On either side of the keyboard, we have four speakers that are Dolby Atmos enabled, and they get pretty loud, and for the most part, they sound pretty clear, except for maybe a totally full volume. There's just a hint of distortion. For ports, we have a USB Type-C 3.1 Gen 2 port, a USB Type-A 3.1 Gen 2 port, and a 3.5mm audio jack on the left. On the right, we have another USB Type-A 3.1 Gen 2 port, and another USB Type-C 3.1 Gen 2 port that is also Thunderbolt 3 capable, so that you can connect this to an eGPU to be able to use an even more powerful graphics card. You can see my video on that at the link here. For connectivity, we have Bluetooth 5.1 and Wi-Fi 6, which is 802.11ax in other words, and you can check out my decoder episode, my explainer series here on the channel, for what that actually means. For battery, we have a 53.1 watt hour battery in here that Razer claims will get 8 hours of battery life. And just like older Stealth models, it comes with a 100 watt USB-C charger that I appreciate because it's pretty tiny and makes for even less weight to carry around with the laptop. 
Now, honestly, this is a pre-production model as they won't actually go on sale for a bit. So it's not really fair for me to show benchmarks or battery tests on it like I normally would. But you can check out my real world test that I did on the last model for how the battery lasted while editing versus web browsing, as well as how fast it charged. And I assume that this one will be similar if only slightly worse thanks to a more powerful CPU, which I guess we should talk about now. Under the hood, we have the aforementioned NVIDIA GTX 1650 Ti Max-Q GPU with four gigs of GDR6 VRAM compared to the GDR5 VRAM from last year's GTX 1650 Stealth and 1024 CUDA cores. And with that, NVIDIA says that it'll have an up to 10% performance boost over the 1650, which isn't much, but regardless, this is still the most powerful GPU in a laptop of this size, period. Paired with that is 16 gigs of fixed GDR4X RAM compared to the GDR4 in last year's model. And we have a quad core 10th gen i7 1065G7 processor that has been upgraded to run at 25 watts instead of the 15 watts of last year's model. That bump in wattage will translate to up to 25% performance boost in the CPU, according to some popular testing sites like Anantech, and that's a decent amount at least. For storage, you get the typical one option of 512 gigs in the form of a PCIe M.2 SSD. But regardless, you can easily upgrade that yourself, which is great. Thanks to Razer's no bloat policy, it runs Windows 10. It doesn't have any apps from Razer pre-installed like other manufacturers might do. We do, however, have some Microsoft added bloatware that you can right click on and uninstall easily enough. The one app that is from Razer, I don't really consider bloatware, and it's called Synapse, and it allows you to customize the chroma, as I mentioned before, but also create macros, adjust fan speed and performance settings, etc. The Razer Blade Stealth GTX 1650Ti costs $1,800 for the FHD 120Hz model and $2,000 for the 4K touchscreen model. You can have the link below for more info on both, as well as the cheapest price that I could find. Now, it feels very much to me like an incremental bump for the Stealth lineup in a lot of ways, but the keyboard change will be big for some people, as well as that CPU and the refresh rate. Now, to me, it's still the most power that you can get for video editing or gaming in the smallest package possible. And while it's not quite powerful enough to edit some of my videos when I use like 6K raw footage, for example, it can actually handle my 4K footage pretty darn well, so long as I don't use too many crazy effects. And as someone who normally at least travels as much as I did, I love the idea of having a laptop this small and light that I can still edit my videos on. There you guys, hope you enjoyed that. Let me know what you guys think of this laptop, of this video in the comments below. Always appreciate hearing from you guys. And if you like this video, please thumbs up it or share it. It's greatly appreciated. And check out the rest of the channel. If you like what you see there, please subscribe and ding the bell next to word subscribe so you get notified when I do new videos. Also, I left the link below to my email newsletter. It goes out once a week. It has all the videos that I do here, plus tips and tricks and other things on the website that don't necessarily make it here to video. As always, though, regardless, thanks for watching.